Welcome back to the show, listeners. Time to wiggle those hips because we are the All Sing Wrestling Podcast Champions, baby! I'm Ernie. This is Michael. Hey, what's up? Hey. It's a new day. Yes, it is. (laughs) I guess you could say that we were recording the show last show while SmackDown was on, so I didn't really know what was going on until the next day. So let's get into it with the news, shall we? For those that want The Undertaker to go into the Hall of Fame by himself, will just have to suck it up. Big Van Vader, as they called him in the WWE, the Mastodon, is joining The Undertaker in the Hall of Fame. Formerly Leon White, who played Frankie's dad on Boy Meets World and appeared twice on the show. I don't know if you heard this before. In 2016, Mick Foley was vouching for Vader to be inducted into the 2017 Hall of Fame before he passed away. Hmm. Did you hear about that? Uh, Not that I recall, but I'm sure I did at the time. In a tweet that I went back to check on, Vader had said, and I quote, told by two heart doctors that my heart is wore out. I have been given less than two years to live. I am only not allowing this as part of my reality. Mick Foley had gone to Facebook and tried to campaign and get a lot of signatures for this and wrote, Hmm. it's time (laughs) to to put Vader in the Hall of Fame. I've been talking with Leon White the past few weeks, so I knew the news might be coming. But seeing it in print this morning was a shock nonetheless. Leon is dying. He has been told by doctors that he may have less than two years left to live. His legacy is so important to him, and he has told me that he that being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame would mean so much on both the personal and professional level. On the global level, Vader was one of the greatest attractions the pro wrestling business has ever seen. I have talked with people at the highest levels at WWE and hope and pray that Leon's name will be inducted in the class of 2017 Hall of Fame inductees. So unfortunately, that didn't happen, and that night we got the following people in the Hall of Fame. DDP? Hmm. Holla, 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 Teddy Long. <laughs> Beth Phoenix, the originator ravishing Rick Rude, the Rock and Roll Express, (laughs) and Kurt Angle as the main event. Of course. Of course. Sadly, he passed away within those two years in 2018. Mick Foley wanted Vader to live out those two years the happiest he could be by inducting his friend to the Hall of Fame. I'm guessing this year he will do the honors in doing so. I hope so. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, just can't wait for him to bring up that time. He oh, no. Tore his ear out again. Oh, God. Or that one time he knocked him out unconscious on the floor in WCW. Or that one time. <laughs> it's like, he's like a walking resume. It's like, oh, yeah, this one time he did hurt me. Yeah, yeah, wait. Are you sure that's your best friend? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, it's like, now that I think about it, never mind what I said. 2016. Uh, well, I guess you're happy about this one. Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville is no longer for the IC title. Oh, uh, So I guess we don't have to worry about Knoxville <laughs> winning this match, and it could very well be in the kickoff show. Might as well be. Yeah, I think hey, it should be. Eh, we don't really need it at all. That means Zayn lost their ricochet with help from Knoxville, so now Prince Puma himself is the new Intercontinental Champion. Yeah. Put that on the new Sunday night heat. Be all right. <laughs> exactly. So hoping he goes to WrestleMania as a worthy opponent. Yeah. So while we were talking about um, basically the entire week on Friday, this happened. Speaking of worthy opponents, I don't know how to feel about Austin Theory against Pat McAfee just yet. <laughs> like, yeah, me neither. And you saw, I was, oh, oh, oh. I, I was excited to hear that Pat got a match, and then you mentioned Austin Theory, and then I freaking went back and watched it. It's like, oh, it's Austin Theory. I'm what? no longer excited. And you remember that uh, that po- or yeah the. The podcast with um, Vince. Not exactly what he said, but didn't Vince say he was going to get him a match? Yeah, he was going to give him a a worthy opponent. I'm like, that's not worthy enough. Come on. Like, okay. uh, Hey, guys. 
I would have said give Austin a bigger opponent. Not to take anything away from Pat, but the whole storyline that Austin is doing with the selfies is great. It makes a lot of sense when it's done on big wrestlers. Like he had done with AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar, uh, which rest in peace, Austin Theory, for that match. (laughs) Madison Square Garden. But again, the same way I felt about a guy who does a podcast and faced and defeated Adam Cole on NXT was a slap in the face. Same to this right here. Austin Theory is a great wrestler. I hated the way they made him into a goofy dork as part of the way with Johnny Gargano. And I'm glad he's doing his awesome gimmick with taking selfies when the wrestlers are down, which reminds me of when mafia members whack their victims and they need proof. There's the picture Austin is doing that. So with that here, Austin doesn't benefit in taking the selfie with Pat. It's just Pat. He's just beating up some commentator. I was going to say, Austin Theory is legit. Isn't Pat, I don't know a lot about him. Is He was a football player, right? Yeah, but now he's just a commentator. And he's, so, right, even getting a WrestleMania match is kind of... Like you're beating up a kicker, and you're beating up a commentator. Yeah. You're taking a selfie for that? You're proud of that? Come on. It's Pat that benefits most in this match by defeating oh, yeah, Austin. Absolutely. Or even losing, just being there. Just being there. So... Give him another person. Austin is like if you're gonna push Austin to the moon with all the stuff that you've been doing lately, give him someone else. Yeah. Give Pat someone else, someone more worthy, like Sami Zayn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'd be, but yeah, it'd be better. Than Pat, but it could be worse. He could be fighting Logan Paul. Uh, okay. There he goes. <laughs> See. Yeah. Um, I also like the storyline Kevin Owens is doing by roasting all the Texas native people. <laughs> he went after Booker T, tell him if he's from Texas, then why was he in a tag team with his brother called Harlem Heat? Harlem Heat, yeah. There's a Harlem in Texas. <laughs> yeah. You, you guys don't know about Harlem, Texas? Oh, yeah. Of Come course. on. Everybody knows about that. Everybody should know about Harlem, Texas. And why did he have an accent when he became King, King Booker? Yeah, um, I don't even... uh-uh. oh, have you God. never been to Harlem, Texas? That's how they talk over there in Harlem, Texas. Sure, all of them. Harlem, Texas is a strange city. <laughs> or twice. Yeah. <laughs> here, here to Harlem, Texas. He also went after JBL and Shawn Michaels. It's a good thing he didn't go after The Undertaker. Oh. Also from Texas. Yeah, I think which, he knew he knew better than that. He knew better, which leaves out the person that is probably gonna that probably is gonna answer the call. Hey, I wrote this before I found out. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kevin Owens went on Raw last night and did his little thing. And look, I could embarrass any of these guys easily, but I have the perfect guest in mind. Someone who embodies the state of Texas like no one else, because just like the state of Texas, he is a broken down shell of his former self living on past glory. Look, we haven't seen this guy in a while, and I bet since then he's let himself go. He's probably drinking beer all day, all night, like the redneck he is. His knees are so shot that when he was in WWE, he needed to wear knee braces just to get through his matches. So if he accepts my invitation, what's he going to need now to get down that ramp? A walker? It's a long ramp. Look, nothing would make me happier than to beat the hell out of this guy in his home state at WrestleMania and give him a stunner the world would talk about for years. And then pour a nice cold glass of milk over his lifeless body. I know you're watching, and I don't think you have the guts to show up. But the bottom line is I am calling you out. Stone Cold Steve Austin! You didn't hear any uh, glass break until today, this morning, <laughs> when you saw a freaking video of cinematic movie, if you will, 
of Stone Cold driving down his road when his ATV and then coming out all dramatic. And this is what he had to say. 19 years ago, I wrestled my last match in a WWE ring. After three rock bottoms, one, two, three, I lost the match. And for 19 years, I've had to live with that defeat knowing my time was up. Kevin Owens, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for waking something up deep inside me that I've kept buried for 19 years. Ever since you started running that damn mealy mouth of yours talking about the state of Texas, the great state of Texas, you got my attention. And why would you want to do that, Kevin? I can think of two reasons. One, you are one dumb son of a bitch. And two, you are fixing to get your ass kicked by Stone Cold Steve Austin. Whether you want to call this a KO show, a match, a fight, a brawl, whatever, I will guarantee you this. In Dallas, Texas, where I started my career at WrestleMania, Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to open up one last can of whoop ass on you, Kevin Owens. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. So, yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I think uh, the only person that would have been worse than The Undertaker is Stone Cold. So. Yeah, give me a hell yeah. <laughs> Austin 316, age 59, says I can't go anymore. <laughs> Man. He's got one more. If I'm I was. Do it. I, I mean, on paper, I'm excited. Sure. Reality is that is nothing's going to happen to Stone Cold. Maybe a few kicks, a few punches, but right. no actual move, no actual no. spot, except for a kick in the gut, stunner. Yeah. From um, Kevin Owens, Austin gets up, Austin does a kick in the gut and a stunner, and so like that's how you do it, son. And then slobber, mud hole stomp, right. slobber knocker, big middle finger, looks out at the crowd, what? <laughs> all that that's all he needs to do it's that's all honest. he needs to do I hope it's on night two and you know what I hope yeah. it's on both nights I really do want so gold on night one and night two just bring him out both nights I could see that and the first night just doing a promo yeah I can see that you want me to go back and forth what <laughs> with you what Oh, it's the what chance all over again. I can't do this. And then we have, what, 29, 27 days, 28 days till WrestleMania now. So yeah. it's going to, they're going to hype it up. So Stone Cold is really going to show up at an event on Raw or SmackDown and say the what chance all over again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't I wait. Wow. And finally, a friend of the podcast, Lan Pitt, has an article up with Jay White. And you can all read that on GameSpot website. I will have a link in the description. Switchblade goes on to explain his actions as to what he did with Guerrillas of Destiny and the future of the Bullet Club faction. Too sweet! Too sweet <laughs> me. Too sweet me. Uh, okay, you can't see me doing it, but I'm doing it. Uh, we're doing the too sweet if you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was the news, and let's get on with the show. All right, AEW Revolution was on Sunday night, and I'm not mad about the winners and losers because it was an awesome pay-per-view show. First match of the night, Eddie Kingston defeated Chris Jericho. Lovely as it sounds. (laughs) After the match, Jericho refused to shake Kingston's hand and vowing he would do so if Kingston defeated him. 
So we're getting a heel Chris Jericho again. Okay. Yeah, I like him better as a heel. Or, like, I'm not shaking your hand. Any petty-ass Jericho. Petty Jericho. There you go. Yeah. Refuse to shake anybody's hand. I don't know where you've been. We're in a pandemic. It's true, you know. Don't be shaking people's hands during a pandemic. <laughs> I agree with Jericho. We don't know where Eddie's been. <laughs> uh, Jurassic Express defeated the Red Dragon and the Young Bucks. As predicted, the Young Bucks joined this match after winning the Tag Team Battle Royal. They had called it. And they tried working through, uh, together throughout this match, but it didn't work out. Together with Red Dragon, of course. Mm. The uh, Jurassic Express wins. Yay. Great. <laughs> Was, wasn't interested in these matches at all, except for a few. Uh, Wardlow defeated Keith Lee, Orange Cassidy, Powerhouse Hobbs, Ricky Starks, Christine Cage in the Face of the Revolution ladder match. It was, you know, it was, it was how a Money in the Bank and there's a briefcase on top. Yeah, yeah there's a big O ring on top. Okay. Like, it looks like a balloon. <laughs> so, Warlord goes up there, grabs the ring, right before he power bombs Ricky Starks on top of another ladder. And, man, the impact on that one. Uh, Ricky Starks hits the back of his head on one of the rungs. It is so brutal. After the match, we see the newest acquisition for AEW. Shane Swerve Strickland, who is now All Elite. He was recently on the gold and black brand of NXT and then got a group of people with him, a stable. They went to the main roster in SmackDown. Remember those guys? I did not. (laughs) Hero... A week, a week later, they released the girl in the group without them knowing. No. Weeks after that, they released the rest of the group. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, SmackDown. Main roster. So as soon as that happened, the IWC wanted this man to go to the AEW. Internet wrestling community. Great. <laughs> Jay Card Gill defeated Tay Conti. God, all this hate on Jade Cargill for no reason. I mean, there's a reason she's green, but <laughs> she she knows it. Everybody knows it, and it's pissing people off. So, like, <laughs> might as well go with it, roll with it. Yeah. Um, she comes out wearing green, just like Jade from Mortal Kombat. So she's holding the TBS championship, and then comes out looking like Jade. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. They should have had Glacier as her manager. Oh, wow. <laughs> During the match. a million dollars on that one. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> During the match, Jade was heavily talking smack about Tay's Brazilian wrestling style, as well as martial arts background, saying, fuck this Cobra Kai shit. Uh-oh. Yeah, she's, she, uh, apparently she's that bitch. That's what she likes uh-huh. to say. <laughs> Even though it's going as far as a slap to the face to all the geeks and nerds out there, she tried doing the crane kick, uh, stance kick, the one at the end of Karate Kid yeah. 1, and my mock Tay Conti some more. It's like, come on, come on over, come on over. <laughs> Tay couldn't get it done, and Jade continues her winning streak to 28 and 0. We have a new Goldberg. Yeah. Literally, That's Jade is a new Goldberg, doesn't know how to wrestle. Well, she does. It's just everybody's mad. Everybody stays mad. Let them stay mad. Yeah, let them. Uh, she's doing something. That's the reason she's on TV, because you're mad. You know, they're paying attention to her. Good, Bad publicity is still publicity. Exactly. Even though they're like, release her. I'm like, damn. <laughs> you wouldn't wish on anybody about that in WWE. Why would you say that about AEW? That's not true. Remember how oh. bad they were to uh, what's the Eva red Murray. girl? Yeah, they. <laughs> yeah, for totally forgot about that. But she's no longer around. That's true. They actually got rid of her. So. She actually can't wrestle. Jade has wrestling experience, and Eva, Eva was just like, oh, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying. 
actually wrestle. You mean, oh, okay. No, no, no. Jade has oh, wrestling okay. experience. Eva yeah. is like, why is she here? She should have been one of Godfather's valets. Oh, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> the whole train. Yeah. My favorite match of the night, CM Punk defeated MJF in a Kazaa collar match. It lasted 25 minutes and 45 seconds. Oh, my oh. God. It was brutal. MJF tried playing mind games by coming out to CM Punk's cult of personality first. Oh. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> You're so mid. But CM Punk said nope and came out to AFI's Mysteria Cantare. You know, the song that I'm going to be playing at the top of the show. <laughs> Complete with old gear from his Ring of Honor days. Immediate goosebumps. Oh, man. It was like watching him versus everybody again. Watching him in a Ring of Honor again. Yeah. Obviously, the whole match got bloody. CM Punk taking most of the hard bumps, because why not? Uh, during the match, MJF grabbed a microphone and took told PG Punk <laughs> to tell the crowd the truth about why he quit on them like he did to MJF. Ooh. Punk replied with, Eat shit, Max. <laughs> <laughs> so CM Punk later grabs the chain and whips Max across his back. Not tonight, son. That's his son. That's oh. his son. Like he, He's my son tonight. Another awesome spot was a t- pile driver tombstone move on MJF on the hardest part of the ring. Outside on the edge, which Ooh, injured Sam's knee. Yeah, it injured Sam's knee a bit. Old man has bad knees now. <laughs> we can relate. Oh, yeah. Tax were introduced in the match. MJF has a superplex, and both men were completely out of it. MJF calls for Warlow, which means he wants his dynamite ring, but Warlow couldn't find it. This distracted MJF, which CM Punk took advantage and hit the GTS. Warlow then, who was that? He still calls it that. He go to sleep. Sure, why not? Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know if you know everything. I thought maybe he owned that too. Ah, uh, or okay. Warlow <laughs> then found the ring, and oh, how silly of him! It was in his other pocket. <laughs> Good old switcheroo. He places the ring on the mat, and CM Punk grabs it. Warlow says "fuck it" and goes to the back to a chorus of cheers. <laughs> Wardlow just turned face. All right, Batista. I mean, Wardlow. <laughs> CM Punk uses the ring and wins the match. Hmm. Uh, next in the card, Britt Baker, DMD, defeated Thunder Rosa for the AEW Women's World Women's World Championship. I'm supposed to say World also in there. <laughs> it, you know, tongue twister. Yeah, women's world championship. It's a world title. It's it's a coveted and it's a beautiful new beautiful title. It's a belt. <laughs> it was a great match. I really didn't care. <laughs> Don't care much. About it. I, I I watched it. I was like, all right, cool. On to the next person. Not Thunder Rosa. Somebody else, please. John Moxley defeated Brian Danielson. After the match, Danielson kicked Mox some more, and they brought in the ring. Not even security could keep them apart, and then the best thing ever happens. The loudest pop of the night. Sir William Regal shows up, yeah. and is all elite, and gets these two to shake hands. He slaps uh, Moxley, and then he turns to look at Brian. Is that what we're calling Brian Danielson? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, <laughs> And then he turns over to look at Danielson and slams him too. And Danielson has this look like, Daddy just slapped the hell out of you. <laughs> like, how dare you, sir? <laughs> he was about to cry. I don't care. Oh, I can just hear Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, and Adam Cole in the back cursing at this man. What he, what he put him through in NXT. War games! <laughs> uh, if only they were able to do that in AEW. That would be pretty cool. Darby Allen, Sting, and Sammy Guevara defeated Andrade, Cassidy, and Matt Hardy because yeah. Not. Who didn't call that one? 
<laughs> is the match before the main event, and I didn't think that it would take be this long, but it was. It left something open for a possible turn on Wednesday or tomorrow. Or Wednesday, I'm sorry, I was not supposed to mention. I don't know. And then a possible showing up the next week or at the pay- the next pay-per-view. Yeah, we'll see. Hangman Adam Page defeated Adam Cole in 25 minutes. This was a long pay-per-view. Yeah. <laughs> every uh, match every match on this card was at least 10 to 15 minutes long or 20 minutes long, except for the Jade Cargill match, who was like seven minutes for those little spots of the crane kick and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff. It was a great match till the end. I honestly thought Cole was going to win. We were all waiting for it. That doesn't happen. I still say Cole is going to be the AW World Champion by the end of the year. I'm calling it. We'll the see. obvious, yeah. The obvious tweets and chance of the night was we want Adam. Which one? <laughs> we want Adam. Shut up. That's not fun anymore. <laughs> Not a bad match to end the show. Adam Page wins, and it ends just like that. Like, the past few months, the rule of three, like, three new people show up. We got um, Swerve. We got William Regal. We didn't get anybody else. That's it. Everybody's waiting for Kenny Omega to show up. Jeff Hardy. Somebody. No. I was honestly thought we were getting a third surprise person, but disappointed. And that was Revolution. Not bad, not bad. We are days away from WrestleMania, and we are still driving down the road to number 38. We've taken trips to go see WrestleMania 3, 5, 6, and 9. All awesome events in their own way. Today, I want to go with maybe one of my favorite, and I don't know if any of these WrestleMania was this perfect. Tonight, we're heading down Madison Square Garden, where it all started for WrestleMania 10. During the show, we will be stating additional facts that you may or may not have known already that we just happen to have come across on the web over the years. At times, we will discuss what happened afterwards to either the feud or the wrestler throughout the year. After we discuss the WrestleMania moments, we will rate it by the card, the roster, what impact did it have on pop culture, because it did this year. And is it rewatchable by giving a unique rating system, such as how many videotapes out of 10 will we give it, and will we take it with us to school to have our friends watch it during a free class or an elective? Because that's the way the world works. All right, let's kick it off. Down on cue, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, March 20th, 1994, Madison Square Garden. Vince opens up the show by bringing out the original wild man, Little Richard, to sing America <laughs> the Beautiful. <laughs> As soon as he said that, I was like, oh, really? <laughs> and then I'm looking like, hmm, all right, 95. What was going on in 95? Oh, okay. Probably the reason Mark Merrill was named that by Vince because he looked just like Little Richard. Yeah, <laughs> the hair and everything. Same reason he was named Johnny B. Bad in those of you having a gimmick of a flamboyant, flamboyant Little Richard lookalike. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Commentators for the show is Vince McMahon and Jerry Lawler. Which I forgot uh, how much I like them together. Right? Well, besides the fact that Vince totally destroys my ears every five seconds. Yeah. It's gonna be a... It's what I'm a <laughs> And he just goes with that. It's the, he's gonna do it! Dude, what? How many people are in there? <laughs> Dark match won the Heavenly Bodies defeated the Bushwhackers. Okay. 
Um, mm -hmm. Even after all that was done to Tatanka by Jimmy Del Rey, the Heavenly Bodies are still employed. Yeah. Cool. Great. Well, Good. Uh, that's been sport. Yeah. Hey, great job there, guy. You have a serious guy being accused, and okay, sure. <laughs> Let's but go look for at it. the match you gave him, though. Maybe that was the punishment. Push records. <laughs> <laughs> How was this man not in jail or prison? <laughs> even, even like the entire year, he's like, wait. I kept reading on them. It's like, they were here, they were here, they were here. How are you not in prison, dude? Damn. Like, people saw you and you blamed it on Tatanka, and still Tatanka was like, nah, I'm at you, son. What? A lot nicer than me. Hey. Gotta, gotta protect the boys. Yeah. All right. Actual first match of the night exceeded my expectations for the show. Uh, damn. <laughs> In the words of Farouk, damn. <laughs> Yeah, that was a main event match, but in the beginning. Main event caliber match in the beginning, yeah. and it's the longest match of the night for good reason. 20 minutes and 21 seconds. Owen Hart defeated Bret Hart. Man, the storyline of this, going back to Survivor Series, mm -hmm. then the Royal Rumble, and then the whole promos they did, it reminded me so much of when... Austin and the Rock and the um, Limp Biscuit team in there. It's like that's oh. how you do. That's how you do a promo, and then this is how it. This was the blueprint right here. Mm -hmm. They do a recap showing Owen Hart getting eliminated by Shawn Michaels, and even though Team Hart won the match, Owen still has the audacity, audacity to come out and try to make it about him. Of course. We get that cool Owen Hart synthesized intro. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> Wasn't championship music, main event music for sure. Wasn't championship main event music. It was like, I want to do my own thing away from my brothers and family. So I must do an 80 cent <laughs> intro. We also heard this on the WWE Raw game so many times. I never got tired of it. Probably why. <laughs> it's like, do, 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 do. Yes. It's the opening, the opening chords to it, too. It's like, yeah. boom, boom. I was like, what? I was like, okay, sure. Uh, second, Brett comes out. Love the camera work for Brett's entrance. Like, we go from, oh, look, here's uh, Owen Hart to extreme zoom. Oh, yeah. And then roll <laughs> back. Give Brett the best entrance. Don't worry about Owen. Well, that's what the budget all went. It was like 90-10. Uh, this match was basically wrestling and what they learned in the dungeon. Yeah. Man, it's like, I just wanted to watch it twice. Like, oh shoot, what? Damn. Well, we got has to see Dude, Boy, Has Dude been in attendance? He would have been yelling at both of them for messing up. Yeah. He would have he would have found a reason. Thanks like don't oh my no, get in there. <laughs> if you if you want somebody that's never watched a wrestling match to be a fan of wrestling and the acting, show them this match. Literally show them this match. Mm -hmm. The introduction to these two, Brett telling everyone he is going to put his brother in this place. Owen trying to get out of the shadow of his brother, both of them wrestling. Brett taking him to his limit. Owen, the black sheep of the family, the black heart, persevering and winning this match. And then the camera shows Brett's face. The embarrassment and humiliation that his brother out-wrestled him. And as Bobby Heenan said the year before, he beat the wrestler with a wrestling move. Beat the wrestler with wrestling. Again! Oh, yeah. This I was... just... Yeah, go ahead. I would say it was actually ending. It, it was, was clean and it was a good uh, that sequence at the end was really good. Didn't see that coming either. Nobody did. I was just like, wow, he got beat by his brother. Yeah. 
like overshadowing what was to come later on. This was Brett's year, like literal year. Yeah. He made this year possible for all of us to watch wrestling. But let's talk about Owen. In June, Owen Hart won the King of the Ring. Mm-hmm. The Rocket renames himself the King of Hearts and changes his damn freaking intro music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, finally. And tags with former Hart Foundation member Jim Neidhart. SummerSlam, we get another match between these two, but in a steel cage match, which Bret Hart won. After that match, Jim Neidhart attacks the British Bulldog, who was sitting ringside with his wife, Diana. Mm-hmm. Jim strikes the blow on Bulldog from behind, but takes Diana with him as well because he had his arm around his wife. Basically, the hearts were upset that with Neidhart that they hurt his sister. Yeah. And she shouldn't have been in ringside. And Bulldog knew the cue. Like, here, let me put my arm around my wife. Come on, baby. You're coming with me. <laughs> if I go Owen down, con- you're going down. You're going down with us. Owen continues to feud with his brother all year round until they reunite in 1997. Like, feud of the decade. Yeah, They only had it for a few years. Yeah, still. Yeah. <laughs> uh... I'm not mad about this match. Bam Bam Bigelow and Luna Bashan defeated Doink and Dink the Clown. <laughs> Doink and Dink. <laughs> Doink and Dink. It's six minutes and nine seconds. I mean, it was a short match. Didn't really care for it, but we did just spend like 20 minutes on an awesome match. Yeah, they had to have some relief. So it felt more like get some of the rest for the next match that's going to blow your mind. Right. No idea what they were trying to do with Bam Bam this year. Uh, if anybody deserved more of a push as a heel this year, it would have been Bam Bam. But unfortunately, they went with Bob Backlund. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> the old man. The old man who's out of touch. And I think it was like, oh, what's to come for Vince? Yeah. Uh, Diesel wasn't there yet. Yokozuna was fading out as number one heel. Adam Bomb was a jobber. Yeah. Basically everyone that Yeah, basically everyone that helped Yokozuna win the casket match at the Royal Rumble. Uh the heels isn't wearing like top heels at all. Right. Um I didn't think of them as a top heel except for Ted DiBiase. But he's not wrestling anymore. He's not a manager. Wrestling, no. Yeah. And IRS maybe. But even then he's a yeah. lackey. He's yeah. a patsy. He's he a was- um Go go do this for me from Vince and Vince is all uh, not Vince. Go do this for me from Ted DiBiase and IRS does it, but he comes back all like, "Sorry, boss, I couldn't get the job done." <laughs> he's the and, guy that thinks he's the co-host, but he's really just the one of the uh, maybe the producers at best. <laughs> <laughs> they break up Bam Bam and Luna and have Ted DiBiase buy off Bigelow's contract. There's your number one heel doing heel stuff, but he's not a wrestler. So immediately he is put in the million dollar corporation. Already on the team is the down and out and hard times legend Nikolai Volkov, who wears (laughs) property of Ted DiBiase on his trunks. (laughs) Of course, he has his taxman, IRS, Erwin R. Scheister. Like, what kind of name was that? Erwin. Such a. What makes you not want to like him? Shyster. (laughs) That's why. (laughs) Yeah. And then the third man is Bam Bam Bigelow. Eventually, others join as well, like King Kong Bundy and the fake Undertaker. (laughs) Still, not one of them get a shot at the top heel. It's none of well, King Kong Bundy. Tatanka was. Yeah. But that was after SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah. That was like. Second half of the year, and it yeah. wasn't even you had to have been the whole year, you should have been the top heel, right? And after what he Tatanka did, I was like, okay, you're number one heel now for the rest of the year, for the rest of this until you leave us. Until you leave, sorry, dude. <laughs> um, he had that storyline of selling out and joining the team. Uh, they did Luna wrong also. As this was going on, the women's division was kind of taking off 
Alondra Blaze was the women's champion in the roster of just about three women and some jobbers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but at this time, it was Luna, Alondra, and Leilani Kai. Yeah. I uh, didn't know who she was. I saw her and I was like, oh, that's Leilani Kai? I thought it was, she would look totally different. Okay. Well, let me ask you when she came out, were you expecting to see Bull Nakano? Because that's actually who I was expecting. Blue anymore. It's like, oh, that's not her. That's somebody else. I was like, I was expecting Leilani Kai, not Leilani Kai. Okay. <laughs> See how my accent changed. Uh, okay. I, yeah. I was expecting a Japanese somebody. wrestler, okay. not Trailer Park Trash. Yeah, I, was... <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Notable names later on is Bull Nakano and Bertha Faye. <laughs> she, she joined a failed division. Now I understand why she threw the tide on the garbage. Yeah. Yeah, right. Freaking three minutes. She didn't this, beat anybody. No. It's, well, she, a tournament, but it was. Well, yeah, but. Eh. I mean, where was Rock and Robin? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Still singing the National yeah, <laughs> America yeah. the Beautiful. <laughs> oh, back at WrestleMania 4, 5. Oof. One of those. Oh. Don't quit your day job. We told yeah. you. You could have been here. It's later revealed on the dark side of the ring of Luna's episode that Londra didn't mind letting Luna win the championship and she was going to lay down for Luna. But Luna broke the count at the last second because she didn't want to get herself or Medusa in trouble. Yeah. Uh, we know what happened to Doink. And this is no longer Matt Bourne who got released in December. Drugs. <laughs> This is now the new guy, Ray Licamelli, who continues to tag with Dink throughout the year. <laughs> Speaking of Dink, he was a big part of 93 when Doink was a heel and was facing Randy Savage. Dink came out from under the ring dressed as a miniature Randy Savage and attacked Doink. Oh, yeah. I had to look it up. He looked exactly like Randy Savage, but just a smaller version. Oh, wow. I have to go back and look at that again. <laughs> Uh, later on in November, he was repackaged and given as a gift to Doink by Santa Claus. Santa! <laughs> After a while, he's released and goes back to Mexico and becomes a mini luchador of the original size wrestler. <laughs> Ma- Mascarita Sagrada El Dandy? Whatever it's called. Yeah. Not bad, but the match was just six minutes long. And then we get to the other main event. Uh, Randy Savage defeated Crush in 9.39. Oh, um, oh, what would you have called this match? You mean like what type of match? Because I definitely didn't think it was a Falls Count Anywhere match, although I guess it... Could this have been a better match had it been a glass man standing match? Yeah... That probably would have been better. I definitely didn't. Um, and I, I didn't know. I guess I wasn't the whole 60 second thing. Because now when they do false count anywhere, they don't get counted out. 10 seconds. <laughs> well, but false like, count anywhere, you can't get ca- counted out. Right. Yeah. So but it was like second. the last man standing. It's a six, 10 seconds. Oh, like, yeah, all right, yeah, if, you're not up, screen, yeah. if you're not up in 10 seconds, you're out. This was like almost like that. But they had a 60 I, second. I was like, that's a long time. Like, was Last Man Standing not a a thing back then? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not yet. Like, the premise of this. All right. So we're going to do a match where I'm going to uh, beat you like five times. One, two, three. And then the only way to win this actual match is go back to the ring, brother. <laughs> After he hangs him up on that jungle gym looking thing. He, Freaking Randy sweeped him. Like, literally, it was a sweep of sweep. He just, every cover was from Randy Savage, and Crush was just like taking it. Like, why are you there? <laughs> <laughs> All 10 minutes. You couldn't. Oh, man. Uh, the best, it. best part. Best part. I love how Mr. Fuji is not fucking around here. <laughs> It throws a cup of water on Crush when he's out. It's like, <laughs> make up, motherfucker. <laughs> Fuji's losing two matches tonight. Crush better not embarrass him right now. Yeah. But he did. He did. 
Uh, it was Randy. funny though how how he won though. Uh yeah, upside down, and then he like try to tie him up, yeah, get him, right. keep him up there, but it didn't work. So it's like, screw it, man. I'm gonna go back to the ring. <laughs> Dig it. Randy Savage wins by tying Crush upside down in the backstage area. Meanwhile, production is seen everywhere. Like, help him! <laughs> what? Him. After this, it was back to calling matches on Raw, King of the Ring. Yeah. They basically had match nothing for him with his last time in the WWE being the MC at SummerSlam. Okay. Of course, the rumors that he left because Vince found out he was hooking up with Stephanie McMahon, who was 18 at the time. I I, I, I checked the numbers. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. Uh, he wasn't enforcing himself on her on a oh, minor. Gosh. No, she was 18. She was legal. I don't think that happened at all, though. Like, yeah, I don't. Of all people. Yeah, you know, save herself for some other guy. <laughs> Well, I would think Shawn Michaels or somebody like that. Not Shawn Michaels' best friend. Or what, Marty? Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Nash and Razor Ramon before they left WWE. Like, a hey, Triple H, you should check out this girl. Oh jeez! What? <laughs> Crash had a cr- crush. Crash. Crash. Crush. Crush had a bad time after this, losing his King of the Ring qualifying match because of outside interference by Lex Luger, which then started a feud until SummerSlam. Crush doesn't come back until the 95 Royal Rumble. Man, he just had a horrible year. But he was one of those people that did The Undertaker wrong at the Royal Rumble, so fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he gets his comeuppance when Undertaker returns. Hey, good to know things don't change when it comes to women wrestling. Alundra Blades defeated Leilani Kai <laughs> for the WWE Women's Championship in three minutes. God, it's like, okay, you can have a three minute uh, WrestleMania moment. <laughs> Leilani is a former women's champion and a former women's tag team champion with Judy Martin. As the Glamour Girls, and we're managed by Jimmy Hart. That's all I can find out about her. <laughs> yeah, that's about all there is to know. <laughs> Trailer Park. <laughs> Leilani. <laughs> Alondra was an awesome German suplex bridge, which reminded me so much of Mr. Perfect's Perfect Plex. Ugh. Alondra Blaze would ask Vince to bring in more women so that she could uh, be of good use and yeah. wrestle more. Hey, she wants a job. You guys gave her a job. Now utilize her. Don't give her that. We have nothing for you at this time. You had something with everybody else. Get. We don't get that until the summer when she faces. It defeats Bull Nakano. Yeah. Like, all right, we got you a new opponent. She's freaking huge. She's Somebody humongous. Did. She's awesome. But you're going over. What? So, summer, August. Defeats Bull Nakano. We don't get to see her for like from March to August. Possibly like a few jobber matches here and there, but hey, you're going over. In November, she loses the women's championship against Bull Nakano. We don't see her from them until the following year. Like, okay. <laughs> we see a backstage segment with Ronda Shear. Yeah, uh, John Michaels. Immediately, my 12-year-old self goes back in time and remembers her. Ooh. <laughs> that's a, a memory core. I was more excited to see Burt Reynolds. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Shawn Michaels, being who he is, gets in this. Burt Reynolds interrupts and tells HBK to shave. HBK unzips Burt's jacket knowing he knew. He knew. <laughs> I just know that he knew and saw that Poe's birthday a few years back. <laughs> because HBK does it as well and in his little girly magazine. So he knew Burt Reynolds had a hairy chest and he's all like, let me see you! Like, dude, that's not... No. <laughs> Why would you say that? Think of the boys. Yeah, think of the boys. 
but Ron this year. Mm-hmm. Up all night. Yep, I remember that show. I, what are you talking about? I've never <laughs> heard of that show. <laughs> sure. Memory core activated. <laughs> oh, man on a mission. Good times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quebecers. Even good times. Um, You know the story of Oscar? How he got the job? <laughs> no. Goes back to WrestleMania 9 when he rapped in front of Vince McMahon and Vince thought he was good and oh, gave wow. him a job. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I guess Vince didn't know a lot about rap. He was like... <laughs> but, yeah, I guess he was good for back in those days. Were there any black wrestlers in 2000? In 19? Uh, God. I guess he wasn't around anymore. No. Hmm. Bad News Brown is out. JYD yeah. is out. Um, Coco? Is pretty much out. Coco? Yeah, I guess he was kind of still around. But, eh? Oh, yeah, he was still around because he was on Raw. But Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Way to keep it diverse, guy. <laughs> uh, looking back at this entrance, why? <laughs> That's why I say he had <laughs> He must have done better in his audition. Oh, like hey, back then I'm like, yeah, a rapper, awesome. Oh yeah, I'm now, sure he thought it was cool back then. And now it's just like my ears, man. What the <laughs> hell happened? The sound, I love uh, the sound guy. The sound guy ruins everything. <laughs> this was a case of two of the worst tag teams fighting each other. Yeah, it wasn't well, a good match. Although I did like the double suplex. Oh. Uh, I hated watching this again. I <laughs> unfortunately this didn't stop the Quebec Quebecers from claiming Mabel was unsafe to work with. Because he is, we have proof, asked Kevin Nash and the Undertaker. Well he is Jack. I don't think he had a whole lot of control over his movements. Don't make excuses for him. Yoko Zuno defeated uh Lex Luger via DQ. Yeah. Lex Luger. Mr. Perfect. Oh, Mr. Perfect. Lex Luger can keep his hands off of Mr. Perfect. <laughs> like, hey, man, don't touch the ref. Stop touching the ref. That's true. We should have known better. And 1440. I love that perfect swerve. I, I mean, Mr. Perfect didn't forget about what Apple did a year ago. You yeah. know, it was Alexander's fault, not perfect. <laughs> As soon as he did it that night on Yokozuna, Kurt Henning had a momentary flashback of, oh shit, that happened to me too. And that elbow again. It's the plate. Now I remember why I'm here. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think he had amnesia up until that point. Like, oh shit, concussion is out. What? I'm back. Time to screw this match. <laughs> Unfortunately, Alexander likes to talk a lot, and so he was talking to a few other wrestlers at a bar about how he was going to win this match, and a journalist overheard it and put it in the newspaper the next day. <sighs> Way to go. <laughs> well, WWE can fix this by having yeah. Mr. Perfect beat a scapegoat and rekindling that feud. Yeah. Uh, but Mr. Perfect, once again, is out of action due to his back, and he takes the whole year off. Thanks for stopping by, Kurt. See you next time. <laughs> Which will be... Introducing Hunter Hearst Emsley. Not bad. Not yeah. a bad way to come back. Not a bad way. Uh, Luger feuded with Crush until King of the Ring, and then we all saw that Alexander had joined the Million Dollar Corporation because, well, who isn't going to believe a Native American? <laughs> I believed him. Of I course. totally believed him. I thought for sure. Um, Tatanka was a Johnny Bananas before the banana boat set sail and stole the money from Sarah on Rivals 3. <laughs> Tatanka took the money and stabbed his best friend in the back. Booyah. <laughs> sometimes you gotta, you gotta take the money sometimes. And that's how Tatanka became the most, number one most heel ever. Yeah, because he of that good. moment. He was a good one back then. And something that not a lot of people 
would have expected. I mean, we did have Jeff Jarrett, but... Yeah. Eh. <laughs> they wouldn't call him a number one heel, just no, like I don't think some so. guy. He doesn't call himself a number one heel back then. He just wanted to wrestle. But, you know. <laughs> him and his team, uh, back to Alexander, him and his team, Guts and Glory, oh, what an original name, <laughs> <laughs> which consisted of Smoking Guns, Adam Bomb, and Mabel. That's horrible. Mm-hmm. Lost to the Million Dollar Corporation at Survivor Series. Oh, man. He had Mabel in there. What the hell? Yeah, what'd you expect? Maybe if he had the All-American Badass in his corner again, he wouldn't have lost. <laughs> Just saying. Ah, am American Badass. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, favorite match of the night. I'm kidding. Earthquake defeated Adam Bomb in 35 seconds. Yeah, I, you know, I didn't even the match when I was watching that. I thought, you know, because he attacked, or no, I'm, yeah. Um, they don't even how, get entrances. Yeah, no, because Howard Finkel attacked uh, Harvey Whippleman attacked yeah. the Fink. Let's get it right. Harvey Whippleman attacked the Fink. <laughs> well, okay, but and then Harvey Whippleman on his ass though. He's so like. Hey, your big ears and your fake hair. Like, yeah, yeah we get it. <laughs> and Fink is all like, oh, hell no. Started going up to him, and then Adam Bomb comes out. It's all yeah. like, don't mess with my manager, bro. And he tries to get at the Fink, and then Earthquake comes out. Yeah. And I didn't even know there was a match. It's just like, okay, why? It's like a <laughs> ref comes out. It's like, okay, that's, or, that's weird. Uh, natural no disaster <laughs> took care of the explosion. Cool. Yeah. Uh, at 35 seconds, I guess it was just like a fix for the Yokozuna match. Sure. Yeah, pretty much. A sideshow. It wasn't even long enough to go to the bathroom or anything, though. Right? It was like, okay, right on to the next match. <laughs> uh, Razor Ramon defeated Shawn Michaels in the ladder match. First ever ladder match shown on WWE TV. for the Intercontinental title. It actually wasn't the first ever, but okay. Um, The latter is introduced by Bret Hart, who had a match against Shawn Michaels to showcase what it actually was. Um, They don't actually do it until it's Shawn Michaels versus Rizzo Ramon, first ever. We still get to watch that Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels ladder match on the Peacock. Oh wow! Okay, I'll have to check that. It's out. there. It's on. It's there. It's like on Hidden Jams or something. Okay. I'll have to watch that. HBK and Chico went twenty minutes <laughs> over and ruined the WrestleMania moment for other wrestlers that were supposed to be in a tag team scramble. Uh. Yeah, with all those guys backstage, right? With the. Yeah. After the match, they were both yelled at by Macho Man, who called them both selfish. This match was voted by fans as match of the year. Dave Meltzer gave it a five-star rating. And we all know what happens when a match does this well. The WWE needs to recreate it. Case in point, once in a lifetime. (laughs) Yeah, once. Once in a lifetime. Should have been once. What depends on whose lifetime? The next year? Two well, lifetimes. <laughs> there's some. Well, it doesn't have to be human life, does it? Oh, uh, sure. Why not? Could have been a goldfish. Oh my god! <laughs> Just trying to help. <laughs> I was like, I forgot about that match. <laughs> oh, cool! Once in a lifetime, part two. <laughs> For the next few months, HBK was out with injuries, in which he started his own talk show called The Heartbreak Hotel. Not to be confused with the SmackDown Hotel. No, no, definitely not. Heartbreak. In August, HBK and Diesel won the tag team championship from the Head Shrinkers, who turned face. They were faces. The next day, Lee Diesel lost his Intercontinental title to Razor Ramon when HBK accidentally super kicked Diesel. Hey, good job there, buddy. A little suspicious there, and you think they were going teasing a split. 
Survivor Series had happened again when he super kicked his best friend and lost the match for the team. If it was an accident, then why did he run away? True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little little thing called Marty Jannetty. <laughs> He's known for that. <laughs> Lee didn't do it on the barbershop. No. Oh, put him through the glass. Diesel will probably put Michaels in the glass. Like, ah! Razor continued to feud with HBK and Diesel, trying to win back the IC title after he lost to Diesel on an episode of Superstars. We get it on a C level, and not on Raw. It was just like, let's go to the D show. It's all right, because I actually got to see it. I fine. <laughs> SummerSlam, he won it back with Walter Payne in his corner. At Survivor Series, he was the lone survivor of his bad guys team, which had the one, two, three kid, British Bulldog, and the Hedge Shrinkers against the Teamsters, such as generic name team, <laughs> which consisted of Diesel, HBK, Jeff Jarrett, Owen Hart, and Jim Neidhart. Not bad. Not a bad team, though. I mean... eh. He would go the remainder of the year feuding with Jeff Jarrett for the IC title. Razor. And in the main event, finally, Bret Hart defeated Yokozuna for the WWE Championship with Roddy Piper as a special guest referee. The match lasted 10 minutes and 38 seconds. Why? Because um, Yoko can't go 15 minutes. No. No. It's the last of that long, looking back. He, the first match was like 14 minutes. He gassed out. This is the reason he took the belt from him. This one was like 10 minutes shorter. Like, come on. Why'd you put the belt on him in the first place? I guess Brett. Like, you're going to give it to him and not... Oh, yeah, Hogan. Well, and then you give it to him again. Sure. And then you don't give it to the Luger. Great. You expect him to be in 10-minute matches all the way to now. (laughs) Yeah, maybe they thought he was going to work on his cardio. Oh, (laughs) wow. After WrestleMania, they tried to embarrass Yoko, who we all know is Samoan. So they had him face Earthquake in a sumo match in which he lost. (laughs) Come on. But Earthquake actually was a sumo wrestler at one point. So. Earth, yeah, Earthquake was a sumo, but keep it kayfabe at least. Like, well, right, yeah. Like, he's Yokozuna. He's your freaking big ass man. Don't you know? Make him look strong. Not Earthquake does it. He embarrasses him. But do you hear from Earthquake ever again after that? Does he do anything special after that? Your mm-hmm. number one guy who you had as a champion. <laughs> And now you're embarrassing him in a sumo match against a what? What is earthquake? It's supposed to be Italian, I think. But... Mid card. Oh, mid as far as that, yeah, mid card. Yeah. Opening card in 35 seconds in a match. We didn't get to see him, but no. <laughs> you know, oh, make him look strong at least. Give him. You know, he's an annoy. NOA. He's uh, related to um, which one? <laughs> Who's he related to? Them. He's related to all no, of them. He's Samoans. a Samoan. Like, what would The Rock have done? What would The Rock say about this? The Head Shrinkers. What would Roman Reigns think Roman about Reigns, that? The Bloodline. What would they say? What would they say? Make him look strong. Yeah, they didn't acknowledge Yoko. Uh, after this, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was like, oh, you lost in a sumo match. You are Sean. That, that was your match. <laughs> you are Sean. Sean the non-believer. Sean. Sean. Uh, he lost again at the King of the Ring in a tag team match with Crush against his cousins, the Hedge Ringer. Yeah. It's like, you desecrate our family, we beat you. <laughs> oh, you embarrassed us. And then after the summer of real versus fake Undertaker, he focuses attention on the man that put him there. 
another casket match at Survivor Series with the original Walker Texas Ranger, <laughs> Chuck Norris, as the special guest enforcer. After Who the else? match, he, he freaking roundhouse kicked a few people. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Jarrett. Nobody deserves it more than him. <laughs> right. It's like, he took it. Now can I be number one heel? No. <laughs> Next year. Maybe next year. Yeah. Go find yourself a manager. <laughs> Go find yourself a road dog. A <laughs> roadie. After the match, we don't see Yokozuna for another few months. And when he did come back, he was bigger than before. Oh, yeah. Like, gained another 200 pounds. Yeah, he was uh, a beggar. Yeah. Uh, I did mention this was Brett's year, and it was. After the match, all the boys in the back came out to hoist Bret Hart over their shoulder yeah. with Macho Man Randy Savage leading the way. Um, basically, the guys that weren't able to have a match because oh HBK and Chico went 10 <laughs> minutes over. It's like, all right, we're going to have a WrestleMania moment. Let's go out there and cheer for this guy. <laughs> sure, only the faces. The heels can't come out, damn it. No, no, of course not. The heels had their own little thing backstage in that little... No, I'm the captain. It's like, all right, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that was your heel moment. That was your WrestleMania moment. Randy is credited as the idea behind Bret Hart being the new face of WWE and the new generation era. So let's lift him up. Let's focus our attention on Bret. Um, you can see Owen come out. And I swear to, to you, his face. And then him mouthing off the words. This was my moment. <laughs> you ruined my moment. Like, damn, dude, you won your match. What do you want? I can have a title match now. I was like, yeah. Just say thank you and go for it. Go on. He should have been a champion. This should have been given him the belt. He should have won the belt at SummerSlam and then lost it to Brett again later on. That should have been the deal right there. Brett, uh, Owen Hart as the WWE champion would have been good for business. Yeah, they should have gave it to him for a few months. <sighs> After winning the WWF championship, we have an awesome year of matches on pay-per-view and Raw. Brett and Lex Luger had both won the Royal Rumble by that year by being the first people to ever do this for the very first mm-hmm. time. Both wrestlers were knocked out at the same time when it came down to wondering who Vince was going to put the belt on next at WrestleMania. The crowd was heavily towards Brett rather than Lex Luger. <laughs> so everything that was said to Lex after SummerSlam yeah. was null and void when they saw this interaction. Oh, we thought the people liked you. Not anymore. So the match would have gone like this if Lex hadn't uh, opened his mouth. Brett in the main event against Lex Luger. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, and we get this memorable moment. Bret Hart's memorable match that year on Raw was against the One Two Three Kid, <laughs> and it was freaking that match was awesome. Like he, Which they're both guys, so he pushed I, One Two Three Kid. Yeah, he continued. To he continued to feud with his brother, even giving him a title shot at SummerSlam. Should have been it right there. And then loses the belt at Survivor Series against a heel version of Bob Backlund. <laughs> so you're going to give it to Bob Backlund, but not Owen. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. Uh, that one time when um, CM Punk told Vince to apologize. Apologize for this. <laughs> We get Bob Backlund as a champion for like seven days, six days before Diesel wins it. But we don't ever get Owen as the champion. I apologize. He must have owed Bob Backlund a check and he was like, just give me the belt and we'll call it even. Your father wouldn't have done something different. <laughs> I'm not my father, damn it. <laughs> You're fired. It's like, all right, I'll give you the belt. But you gotta put you gotta um, put diesel over. He probably wasn't happy about that. That year, um, Brett was in a few TV shows, 
Especially yeah. one called Lonesome Dove. <laughs> never seen it. <laughs> I never got to see it. I would have watched it back then. I'm going to have to look it up. I actually... I ended up watching an episode of Medicine Woman because I thought that was the show. <laughs> well, somebody else was in there, actually. I forgot who. Oh, I didn't I think see it, it any wrestling. I think it was Edge. Or uh, was it... No, he was in Highlander, wasn't he? Yes. He was in Highlander. Um, I thought this was the year that uh, Brett was on The Simpsons, but it wasn't. Oh, okay. Not yet. Uh, that was cool. Uh, um, let's review. All right. What did you think I... of the card? Um, so wasn't too I mean it was nine matches I think they had a few very very strong matches to make up for the fluff so I think overall I I've I, I'm, I view it more positively than negatively overall especially because of, even the Brett and Yokozuna match was okay I mean at least I, I thought it was kind of cool that at the end the turnbuckle and that's how they end it clean clean win so i thought that was good it's uh, kind of weird razor ramon shot the way he fell yeah and I, this whole time i kept thinking it was roddy piper who moved the ropes or like oh. touched the rope because he um yoko like um follows roddy to the back and i'm thinking like yeah. oh he must have pushed the ropes. He must have done something, yeah. But because he's like right there grabbing the ropes and like checking on them and like, okay. But no, it wasn't that. Like, all right. That's um, cool. the, yeah, the entire card was awesome. Yoko Zuna yeah. and Bret Hart were double, which really yeah. like top face and top heel. And then Yoko Zuna leaves not being the top heel anymore. I wonder if there was any backstage heat or anything of that. Like the fact that I would imagine some of the other talents like, so wait a minute, you needed two guys to work twice. You couldn't, you couldn't give us a match. Yeah. Those, the tag team that, yeah. uh, <laughs> that the heat wasn't on Brad or Yoko. Right, it, was... it was more on HBK and Chico. Yeah. Or like but... 10 minutes over. And I'm like watching the match and then rewinded it 10 minutes before. And like, huh, that, would have ended earlier. Yeah. Match for that. I, if it would have been yeah. shorter, I don't think it would have been nearly as memorable. If it would have had that much of an impact. No. No, I don't think so. But it was good enough. I mean, we should have started the show earlier then. Well, yeah. Um, That's The right. tag team match was put on Raw the next day. So they were all fine. Yeah, they were okay. They were okay, like, but we still didn't get a WrestleMania moment. It's like, all right, well, you know, you didn't. Know. You st- the face, <laughs> the face has got a WrestleMania moment. The heels didn't. The no. heels are like, I'm gonna be a captain. Like, all right, fine, <laughs> you can win tomorrow night. Uh, the faces went on and celebrated with um, Bret Hart. Like, you're the face mm-hmm. of the company. Yay! So wait until HBK gets a hold of you. <laughs> Uh, the roster, fucking the roster was awesome. Yeah, it was all top guys pretty much of that time. I mean, top guys, but I didn't least popular uh, guys, if not some popular guys, but I wouldn't know what to do with them. Like Brett, top face. Yeah, Owen, I would say second top heel next to Yokozuna, but Yoko left, so Owen was top heel, and you still get him in the belt. Um. You, Owen was top heel until SummerSlam. Tatanka took that spot. Yeah. Man. He took that spot and he ran with it. Um, Who else? Adam Bomb turned face. Adam Bomb, yeah. I liked um, him as a good guy. I was a fan of, back then. The Head Shrinkers turned face. Diesel turned face. And who else? Uh, Nightheart turned heel. 
So it's mostly like, okay, we're going to double turn you guys. Yeah, everybody. Switch places, everybody. <laughs> this is pretty much the day. We didn't know who was what and who was where. Uh, Ted DiBiase, had he been wrestling with as well as managing, that would have been the top heel right there again. Because oh, yeah. he, he bought off an old man. He said, come work for me and you won't, you know, and all your merchandise will go to me. Um, I get 70% to 30% because you have nothing. I own your soul. And he takes that. He has his IRS again. Um, his uh, tax guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then he has the third guy, Bam Bam Bigelow, which was um, he also. Yeah. Top heel. Um, that would have been like third or fourth top heel. Definitely. Um, and then who else? He rounds it out with King Kong Bundy. Yeah. Yeah, he was a good one. Oh, man. That was a freaking team right there. So he has all these guys top heels. And then the tiny little face guy who doesn't want to be in the group, but he has to be. <laughs> Nikolai was just like, I'm the sense guy? Great. And then he does the freaking swerve of the year. Tatanka. Damn it. Tatanka. I was... He let I was, us all down. I was upset. <laughs> I was like, damn, that's... Wow. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? Oh, uh, wait. That's not the main event. What's the main event? Undertaker versus Undertaker. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. I guess that should have been the main event. <laughs> um. Well, yeah. That was we liked all that stuff the... back then as kids, though. Yeah, this is like 1994 was a good year. Yeah, that's all the cartoony stuff, but that's what we liked. What impact did it have on pop culture? Lonesome Dove, um, <laughs> TV shows, <laughs> advertisements. Yeah. Um, Undertaker not being around, but a fake Undertaker, and then hiring Leslie Nielsen to <laughs> check out the scoop. <laughs> we had the that first. Was, that was the best thing ever. Just him the, coming, him coming out, and then doing inner um, what, detect being a detective and everything. Oh, oh finally, yeah, yeah, yeah. At, going, yeah. Finally, at SummerSlam, it's like we found him. It's like, mm, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened to the other Undertaker? Yeah, no. Back to <laughs> ECW to you. Yeah, there you go. Back to developmental to you for you. I think that was the first rapping manager wrestler, right? Mo or um, Mo. uh, yeah, Mo. 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 Yeah. No, Oscar. Oscar, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> the first rapping manager. Oh, great. Four K Quick. Oh damn. <laughs> K Quick would have been the first uh, rapping wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John Cena. No. No. K Quick. Okay. He came. He came out in during. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was around. The, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Okay. Correct me if yeah, I'm wrong. Was K Quick in WCW too with them? With the or was that just Road Dog when they had a three something? What was it? Three like rap group. Mafia. Remember there was a rap group in WCW. I'm pretty sure Road Dog was in it. No. No, not Road um, Dog. Not Road Dog. My bad. Um. Yeah. I know which one you're talking three about. Count, it was maybe three count. No, oh. it wasn't three count. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, no limit. No, no, yeah. It was no limit. Soldiers, um, sea murder. I don't remember. <laughs> All I remember is that Kurt Henning was one of the guys that hated it. Yeah, the um, West Texas Rapid, Redneck. West Texas Redneck Rapid Craft Tour. Yes. Three Live Ari. Crew. Three Live Crew. That was in TNA. Oh, okay. With um, Conan, 
K Quick and Jesse James. Hey, well done. Yes, it was road. Yeah. Okay. And didn't so John Cena didn't come around in two thousand two? No, he was around in two thousand four. Uh, as uh, the other era. Well, so I think he was around, but he was the generic whatever he was. Prototype. Prototype. <laughs> uh developmental still yeah so he wasn't around until like later on in 2004 2005 and then he shows up on smackdown but he was apparently he was on ready to rumble the movie yeah oh. he shows he shows up as a cameo we don't even wow. know who he is at the time but he did say now like yeah i'm in the movie like what i've seen that movie so many times no you're not and then he shows like everybody where he's at. He's uh, like a f- vanilla ice flat top, and he's uh, at the gym with everybody else. And hmm. yeah, and it's a uh, yellow hair, and yeah, 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 yeah. like very um, blink and you'll miss it type. Oh, okay. So he's there, and then he shows up, and I'm like, oh shit, okay. Well, I wasn't looking for it, so whatever. Uh, um, pop culture. Is it rewatchable? A mm, couple matches. I wouldn't want rewatch the whole thing. That's... Eh, it was rewatchable. Yeah. Hey. Totally I mean, rewatchable. Without fast forwarding? Without fast forwarding at all. Mm-hmm. Like, rewatchable, the entire thing. Um,. Brad and Owen, yes. Well, yeah. I would um, fast forward Alundra, please. There's no reason to fast forward. Only three minutes. Well, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's true. Bam Bam and Doig was just like a little fun thing. Like, yeah, all right, was... six minutes, I can go do this and this and this while this is happening. So there's that. And then if you come back earlier, fast forward it. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, Randy Savage and Crush, which should have been a last man standing match. Yes, don't fast forward it. You got to watch it. Especially yeah. the part where Mr. Fuji just fucking throws water on Crush. <laughs> like, wake up, motherfucker. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. I don't need two people to embarrass me tonight. I already have Yoko embarrassing me twice. <laughs> oh, twice. My God, yeah. twice. <laughs> uh, three minutes for Alondra Blaze. Like whatever, definitely fast forward man on a mission. In Quebecers this is the only thing yeah. I can say. Um, Yoko and Lex Luger, not fast forward, but you know it's perfect match. It's a good match. Thirty five seconds of very quick now, bomb. Yeah, I bet that for that, <laughs> you hit it. You hit. You start the fast forward. The match is over. Razor and Shawn Michaels. That well, obviously, yeah. in that kind of. So, without the ten minutes, it would have been an eight forty-seven. It would have been just an eight-minute match. Yeah, it wouldn't have had any, not nearly the impact that it had. Eh, I'm glad they did it. And for that tag match, eh, we, we didn't miss anything. We didn't miss anything. Like it was said, just it was like on Raw anyway. So. It was just a bunch of. It was Jeff Jarrett. Who, <laughs> Saw it. I can't wait to see Jeff Jarrett at WrestleMania yeah, really. back then. You know, back then, not Double J. Jeff Jarrett, the slap nuts guy with the guitar, yeah. <laughs> but not a Double yeah, J, I'm Jeff sure, Jarrett, man. country singer, with my baby tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and the main event, of course, you're not going to skip that. You got to watch that. Yeah, and Bret Hart being my favorite. Yeah, of course. And then everybody coming out, the celebrities. Yeah, Burt Reynolds. Burt. Don't, the president was there. Pretton. Mr. Was Saxophone himself. <laughs> was it this one or was it? It was. <laughs> it was. I thought it was in your house, but okay. But yeah, he was there. And at the time, I thought it was him. Yeah. I was like, I think wait I thought a minute, it was him what? Back then, too. Wait a minute, what? It's like, who played the president? I should have seen it, like, checked up on it, but it's like, nah, <laughs> we're good. Um, how many videotapes out of 10? 
I gave it seven. It was Aye. a little better than that. Wow. Yeah. I'm giving it a nine. Mm. I don't know what else I'm going to be watching after this, but that's my highest for now. Like one of my favorite pay per views okay. uh, because of Bread and HBK. Yeah, those matches, I would give those on their own. I'd give them nines. Hey, would we take it with us to school? For those matches, I would. <laughs> hey, yes, I would. <laughs> like, hey, here you go. Let's watch it together. Yeah. And give it to somebody who would appreciate wrestling. Like actual wrestling. The first match, sell it right there. Oh, yeah. Bam. After this, everything is subpar, perfect. I'd almost tell them to watch the thing and have that be the main event. Oh, yeah. That's better. Build up to that. But it'd be weird. Like, where's this belt? They're like, shit. Yeah, that's <laughs> <No. true. laughs> hey, Sure, why not? <laughs> They're getting they're getting it resized. They had to take it in a little bit since Yoko was wearing it. Overextended it. It was stretched, <laughs> stretched the leather. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so we did say if we had another pay per view, we should watch and review. Just like we have with St. Valentine's Day Massacre or the first ever Monday Night Raw to send us a note saying which um, show. One of you told us to check out In Your House 1. So we're doing that right now. Yeah. And I would say that was a good one too. One that I didn't get a chance to see back then. So it was cool to watch something that's old but new to me. Oldie but good here, or uh, pre what do they call it? Pre owned, <laughs> it's new to me. <laughs> in your house, one May 14th, 1995, in Syracuse, New York. That name sounds familiar. I wonder if we're gonna hear it later on. I think so. I think Syracuse, Syracuse, <laughs> Syracuse. Hmm. Oh, hey, isn't that the place where? Oh. Shawn Michaels got beat up there, wasn't he? (laughs) Uh, We don't talk about that. Oh, okay. (laughs) Uh, Commentators for this event, Vince McMahon and uh, Doc Hendricks. Yes. Like, I don't know the reason of changing somebody's name when you've known him for years as Michael Hayes. Michael Hayes, yeah. Excuse me, Michael P.S. Hayes. Pretty sexy. I agree with that. Yeah. There were four dark matches for this event, one of them before the pay-per-view aired, and then three after the pay-per-view went off the air. Wow. But people were able to watch them when they bought the VHS. Which I don't have. It wasn't even on the network either, so oh, well. wouldn't know. And, uh, match number one, John pierre Lafitte, or JPL, as he's now known in Ring of Honor. <laughs> <laughs> or in this case, Honor No More on Impact Wrestling defeated Bob Holly. Sparky Plug. Yeah. This the race car guy. Uh even this guy had a freaking a dark match. Come on. The Undertaker defeated Kama. The ultimate like, fighting machine. Like, why would you put the Undertaker in a dark match? <laughs> He needed some, I guess, took some time off and he practice. Bam Bam Bigelow defeated Tatanka. Bam Bam, was this? Yeah, it was when Bam Bam was a face and Tatanka was a heel. Wow. And then Owen Hart and British Bulldog went to a 15-minute time limit draw for the King of the Ring qualifier, um, which was shown on Raw the next night. Like, forget the other two matches, three matches. Let's show only the British Bulldog. Because that one was 15 minutes longer. Oh, they, they do they do well together. Regular matches. Um, start of the show. Bret Hart defeated Hakushi. 
bless you. <laughs> Which <laughs> fit fifteen minutes. <laughs> I thought that was a long match for a guy who looked like a creator wrestler from Nintendo sixty four, but Right. <laughs> I could say I if somebody would have were to give me a million dollars and say do you this wrestler? What's his name? I I don't ever remember seeing him back then. Like if you would ask me, this was the only paper, this is the only match he had back then, and that I hadn't seen it. So, <laughs> well, I've seen this. Yeah, this is the only match I ever seen him in. And then oh, okay. there was another, there was another match when he went to ECW, and oh, okay. it was um, Hakushi and Hayabusa huh. against RVD and Sabu. Oh wow! Okay. And every time. Um, Bill Alfonso said Hakushi RVD would be like, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Hayabusa and Hakushi, bless you. <laughs> 90s humor. And then uh, Sabu is like, look at the look at both of them and look at, them, look at the camera and be like, mm. <laughs> do, do what Sabu does best. Stare at the camera. Yeah. Mean look. Um, so this match it was uh, Bret Hart in an opening match, basically. Like this whole show is gonna suck, but here's Bret Hart. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> give it all away in the beginning. Again, you know, you want to start from the begin. You want to start at the end. Go ahead. <laughs> Work your way up to the top. <laughs> Should have been the main event, Bret Hart. Yeah. Um. Maybe the best thing about Bret Hart is that whoever he faces, he adapts to his opponent's style of wrestling. Against Owen Hart, it was wrestling. Against Yoko, it was hard hitting moves like the elbow to the face from the top rope, mm-hmm. pointing pointing elbow. The one two three kid, he used his technical experience against Akushi. He took advantage of Akushi flying all over the place to keep him grounded, and beat him with a wrestling move. The wrestler beats a wrestler in a wrestling move. <laughs> Who would have thought? Um, they teased this opener, and I thought the rest of the matches were going to be this good. Boy, did I think wrong. That's how they got people to stay. Uh, in your house. Uh, I forgot about Stephanie Wyand. And then this reminded me. And I hated it. <laughs> <sighs> it was like a female version of Todd Pettengale. Only oh, yeah. cranked up to 10. Her, her creepy smile, her over the top laugh, her I'm not used to <laughs> I'm not used to that, I guess. I'm only used to Todd Pendingale being a, like a mild version of himself. <laughs> because you you're interviewing all these fucking wrestlers who are just pissed off at each other. And then you have an over the top happy go lucky gal happy go lucky woman who's saying well I do hope you win your match <laughs> like oh my god act like you've been here before lady <laughs> say hey try to smile a little <laughs> <laughs> and even Todd was like Todd's her oh my god she was a replacement for Randy Savage unfortunately oh. I like how would you replace Randy's uh, yeah, brother, I think it's yeah. he just gonna go over the top to oh my gosh, I can't wait. <laughs> and we would only see her on WWF Mania on Saturday mornings with the Todster. I remember watching WWF Mania all the time. <laughs> and then she showed up and I just said, Frick, frack it, fuck it. <laughs> go watch that Kung Fu show. Oh god. What was it, Masters? Like, yeah, it was on at the same time. Oh, I don't remember that. Uh, Kung Fu Masters in 1995? Hmm. WMAC Masters. Oh, wow. That name sounds familiar. Yes, remember that? That's what we should have been watching. <laughs> Like I was watching that, oh, and then wow. I hear her voice. I was like, "Ah, oh, okay. I guess we're going to back to that then." <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So let's watch WMAC Masters instead of uh, whatever this show was. <laughs> um, shit, where am I? So we should be at Razor Ramon and Jeez. versus Jeff Jarrett and the roadie. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> Razor Ramon defeated Jeff Jarrett and the roadie. Um, after the match, Jeff Jarrett and the roadie tried to attack Razor Ramon, and out walks from the Caribbean, Fabio Vega. Oh, Vega, yeah. Mount helped him, and then they had their little in, or their little segment, which I had no idea what Vega was saying, but <laughs> I don't think Razor. So, I think he was looking at him like, huh. Like shit. Like, I'm just pretending to be Spanish and I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I'm pretending, man. <laughs> uh, Chico. Uh, this is one of the most memorable views of the 90s. Like, I totally forgot about them teaming together in WCW as the NWO. But these two fighting for the IC title made it memorable. In May, these two played hot potato with the belt. Razor won the IC title from Jared on May 19th. Two days later, Jarrett wins it back. Jeff Jarrett plays his country song with My Baden Knight on the next In Your House in July. Remember that? To which we all find out after he loses the IC title to Shawn Michaels that it was Rhodey who was the one singing and not Double J. <laughs> Double J disappears the, until December and then disappears again until he is seen in WCW the following year in October. Like, he just went back to his um, Smoky Mountain Wrestling or USWA with Smoky Mountain. So. Yeah. NWA. One of those letters. One of those, um, yeah. <laughs> For Razor, it was kind of a disappointing year of up and down. No wonder he left. <laughs> Again, he was a top face, but they did, they still had him relegated to Miss Card status. Mid card, yeah. Oh he my God. Him. Hated that. Uh, SummerSlam, he lost to Shawn Michaels in the WrestleMania 10 rematch. Because why not? Well, he I guess later... they traded one for one. Hey, my click buddy. <laughs> You're a part of the click. Let's go again. He would later get it back at In Your House 4 against Dean Douglas when HBK was unable to wrestle due to getting beat up in a bar by Marines <laughs> um, in Syracuse. Oh, now I remember. Oh, that's where that's what happened there. Okay, there it is. Wasn't this made sure. Razor Ramon the first ever four-time Intercontinental Champion, which now is like up to ten oh, times. Yeah, genius Louise. And it's no wonder he left because he wanted more money, and he didn't want more money at all. He just said, "Like top face, I deserve right. that." At least get utilized better. Like, who did he have uh, back then? Ja, Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Bret Hart was still in the picture. Diesel. Um, was... Bam Bam was, like, there, but at the same time... Eh? <laughs> was, um, was Sid Justice yet, or no? He was a psycho. He was a heel. Oh, okay. He was part of the Million Dollar Corporation. Right, right, right. Okay. So he was basically second top heel with Tatanka. Yeah. Um, Mabel was qualifying for King of the Ring. So he was almost <laughs> there about to kill people. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett is all like, uh, I'll be there soon. All I need is a guitar. And I'm. Uh, Debra. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go pick her up in WCW. <laughs> Kama was kind of there. Undertaker. And what was he doing in 95? Really, why um, wasn't he put in this pay per view? What was he doing? I don't recall, actually. Jeez. Cause, oh, um, was that? Yeah, it was. was injured? Undertaker, Mankind. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he was injured. I'm, no, it, mankind wasn't there yet, but he was injured. 
Mabel injured him, Phantom of the Opera mask. All right, that. there you go, yeah. That's what I thought, yeah, the <laughs> Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> um, Owen Hart and British Bulldog. British Bulldog was a faith. Allied powers and everything. <laughs> <laughs> With Lex. Uh, great. <laughs> um, next. They can all be winners. Again, Adam Baum gets treated to seconds match. Um, Mabel defeated Adam Baum at, it says one minute and 54 seconds, but I swear it could have been longer. Like a little bit longer. Um, it was for the King of the Ring qualifying match. Uh, Adam Baum is just a jobber at this point. Yeah, even, as a phase, even as a phase, it's just like, Sorry, dude, you're not going over. Even though we did break you up from Harvey. But All right. there's that. Uh, Mabel wins King of the Ring and pisses everyone off all year by being unsafe and injuring six other wrestlers. Wow. That's why we didn't have a top face. <laughs> yeah, he was injuring them, injuring them all. <laughs> like, uh, your top face? Not anymore, buddy. Uh Oh, yeah, and Lex was leaving at SummerSlam to go to WCW. But he did show up at SummerSlam. Like, he had left, but he showed up. Um, Six other wrestlers, before getting to Diesel at SummerSlam, giving him a sit-down splash on his back, which would cause Kevin Nash's back to compress and his core muscles to stretch out. Oh, damn. He claimed during kayfabe commentaries that he could not feel his legs during the match. It's the reason why that match was horrible. Um, Vince was about to fire him, but Kevin Nash convinced him not to. Oh, wow. Like, don't worry about it. I'll get over it. And then, like, seriously, on the side, they were just plotting to, like, bury the guy. (laughs) (laughs) But they couldn't. Later on, Mabel would do the unforgivable by breaking Undertaker's orbital bone. Yeah. When he leg dropped his face instead of his chest. He said the chest and he did it on the face. That's Kevin cool. Nash freaking yelled at him in the back. Um everybody was like, How could you? Once again he was about to get fired, but they waited a few weeks until Undertaker come back with a Phantom of the Opera mask and defeat <laughs> Mabel in the casket match. A few weeks later he was fired. It's like let Undertaker work him. Give him to the Undertaker. Give him the receipt. Go for it, and then yeah. he's out. Get him out of here. Like, and then Kevin Nash is all like, "He'll get his due time. He'll get his. Don't worry." <laughs> uh, Owen Hart and Yokozuna defeated the Smoking Guns for the tag team championship. That's eh, that was pretty cool. bad, but for back bad. then though. Eh. Although we would have been sad because smoking guns were the good guys, but top, yeah, smoking guns, top tag team faces. Yeah, and they were popular back then. As hard hard as it is to believe. <laughs> and then Owen Hart, top heel, but you know mid card status, yeah. and wants to play around with the with the mid card and Yokozuna, <laughs> not. Oh, who has the belt right now? Diesel? No, nah, I'm good where I'm at. Yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. We're good. <laughs> Earlier in the year at WrestleMania 11, Owen Hart challenged the Smoking Guns for the tag titles with a partner of his choosing. His partner was Yokozuna, who returned much bigger than before, 200 pounds <laughs> bigger. A few months later, at In Your House, all the belts were on the line for a winner-take-all championship match. Owen Hart was replaced by British Bulldog because... Owen's wife was pregnant at the time and was in labor, so he couldn't make the event. Um, Air quotes. (laughs) As I'm saying that. Just as the closing moments of the match was taking place, out runs Owen Hart to help his team out, but gets a powerbomb from Diesel and pinned. HBK and Diesel are declared the the new tag team champions. The next day on Raw, the team lawyer, the team's lawyer, Clarence Mason, remember him? (laughs) Claims that Owen Hart was not part of the match, therefore they shouldn't have lost the belts. 
The tag team belts returned to Owen and Yoko, but they still lost the same night against the Smoking Guns. Well, damn. Owen would quietly oh, stop. Wow, yeah. Owen was quietly stopped tagging with Yoko and Team with British Bulldog while Yoko goes back to singles competition. I want my belt back. <laughs> um, have you met Diesel? Yeah. Good luck with have, that. Yeah. Have you met Mabel? <laughs> yeah, he'll hurt you in real life, though. Mm, get in line. Have you met Sid? <laughs> yeah, he'll hurt you in real life, too. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> not on accident, uh, though. Not on accident. He'll use scissors. Oh, I was. Oh, oh. <laughs> are we not supposed to talk about uh, that? Oh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, I, I think it was a hotel against Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Lawler defeated Bret Hart in five minutes. That's horrible. Yeah. He Jerry Lawler. It. Hakushi helped out Jerry Lawler win. We know that. Thirty. At least it wasn't a clean. Wasn't a clean. Yeah. Um, at King of the Ring, Bret Hart would defeat Jerry Lawler in a Kiss My Foot match. <laughs> a few weeks later, Lawler would introduce his personal dentist, Isaac oh, Yankum DDS, and would go after Bret. He would be DQ'd at SummerSlam against Bret. Wasn't that where Isaac tore the door off? Oh, no, no, never mind. <laughs> That was a different oh. Isaac who tore the door <laughs> off. The... <laughs> We're not there yet. Um, we still have to go. Yankum. Oh, you mean the fake Diesel? <laughs> no, no. Remember, that's gotta be that's gotta be Isaac Yankum. Oh, you mean the uh, mayor of Tennessee? Yeah, that guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JPL. Was that's be... not a character. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> oh, head trauma. Yeah. <laughs> Good one, Hangman. Good one. <laughs> uh, JPL was repackaged uh, as a pirate, Repo Man, and would steal items belonging to wrestlers and wear them anyway during his entrance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I miss Repo Man. Oh. Uh, he stole Bre- <laughs> he stole Brett's jacket, which Brett took offense, and they <laughs> would have a three-month feud against each other. It was a good match. It was a good a nice feud. Jacket. It was a nice jacket, a good feud. <laughs> and like I didn't like if anything that would have been giving you top heel because you stole stuff. Well. And but at the same time, okay, we just don't know what to do with you after that. You just did. You steal the opponent's stuff. Um, Bret Hart's jacket, Diesel's glove. <laughs> Shawn Michaels smile. Hey! (laughs) Oh, wow. That hurt me. (laughs) That was the same year, too. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't work. Um, Chico's gold around his neck. Um, The million. And then do it on the heels also. The Million Dollar Corporation's money. And bustle that shit yeah. from the inside. That's how you turn him face. Like I stole your money. <laughs> I hacked your account. Uh, Bret Hart defeated Diesel at Survivor Series of that year in a no DQ match for the championship title. It's the one where Diesel saw like "son of a bitch" out loud <laughs> after he loses and then turns heel. Uh, and now for the reason the show was called uh, In Your House Pay-Per-View. <laughs> <laughs> because they were giving away a house on the first yeah, episode. in Orlando. In Orlando. I actually thought it was a special event and it'd be a one-and-done deal. Didn't realize they would be doing pay-per-views every month after this. The next pay-per-view would have been King of the Ring. And then you hear that there's a In Your House too. It's like, what? Mm-hmm. He's, okay, pay-per-views every month. I wonder who that sounds like. <laughs> Looks over at WCW. No. Being... <laughs> they came up with that all on their own. Right. <laughs> we don't steal ideas from others. No. Last year, the bump 
Wait, last yeah, this here now. Here now. <laughs> last year the bump had top um the bump WWE the bump had Todd Pettingale on the show and celebrated the 25th anniversary of the first In Your House. And the winner, Matt Pompaselli, tried looking into him and he's no longer active on Twitter or Facebook, but he was credited on IMDb as being in a movie in 2009 called Prototype. Hmm. You can check out his tweets at Mr. Underscore In Your House. And he fact checked Johnny Gargano last year who claimed that the house has been turned into a Taco Bell. Oh, wow. Pompaselli responded back with, check your facts, Johnny boy. This is false. You heard it from the In Your House winner, Matty P. He That's called funny. him out. It's like, don't, no, nah, I still live here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't live in Taco Bell, I don't think. Uh, finally, the main event. Jeez Louise. Why was this even a thing if you're going to put it in a DQ? Diesel defeated Sid. 11 minutes. Well, Again, the, the longest match of the night goes to <laughs> Bret Hart. Why? Because why not? Why no, not? mate, 1439. Owen Hart, British Bulldog. <laughs> okay. Even, well, though, e- even though it wasn't shown, still. So basically, Owen uh, wrestles twice for about 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, against British Bulldog and a King of the Ring qualifying match, 50 minutes. And then he wrestles again for five minutes with Yoko to defeat the Smoking Guns. Which, Yoko can't go 15 minutes. Exactly, that's and, why. And now that he's a tag team, he can't even go like 10 minutes. He gotta go like, hey, let me tag you in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And even then, it's like the match that they had against uh, Diesel and Shawn Michaels was short. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not comfortable standing on that apron when you're a big guy. Right. <laughs> uh, so Diesel and Sid. Sid at this point was a member of the Million Dollar Corporation. In November, he faced Razor Ramon with One Two Three Kid as a special guest referee. Razor was about to do Razor's Edge when Kid intervened and turned on his best friend, joining the Million Dollar Corporation. And yet, these guys still don't have credibility as top heels. But, you know, you you don't even think of the top stable with Million Dollar Corporation. Mm -hmm. No. It goes to NWO because they did it better. Whatever. Oh my god, he turned on him! And join the NWO. Same thing the Million Dollar Corporation did. But first. (laughs) Yeah, but I think NWO did it bigger. That wasn't there a point where I think the only people who weren't in the NWO were the announcers at one point. Uh, Eric Bischoff? (laughs) No, uh, Shivani and... um, The only two people you can trust, Shivani and uh, Mike Tanay. Yeah, there you go. Uh... Dusty joined. Um, Larry Zabisco, I'm pretty sure he did. He did. I think he did. <laughs> like, I'm not so sure, but I think he did. Uh, Bobby Heenan is like, nope, not doing that. Didn't Norman Smiley join at least one, for a, a day or two? Um, uh, maybe not. I don't. Probably. Like a day? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I think even Norman Smiley. <clears throat> Back when it was a joke by that time. Right. Oh, yeah, way later, like towards the end. Um, Sid, he went on to win a few more matches, but he injured his neck by the end of the year, which took him out of action for a great while. Going back to WrestleMania 11, Diesel defeated HBK to retain his world championship. The next night on Raw, HBK accepted the rematch, but told Sid he had the night off for this one. Sid didn't take this well, so he turned on HBK. HBK... And gave him three top power bombs, taking him out of the action for a few months to heal from injuries. Diesel would avenge his best friend and take on Sid. Tatanka interfered in the match, causing a DQ, and would then attack Diesel, prompting Bam Bam Bigelow to come out and even the field. Yay, Faith Bam Bam. These yeah, two would like team up. Bam, yeah. <laughs> right? These, it was kind of awkward, man. Like, yeah. this guy who just, like, 
beat up my favorite football player and beat up my favorite clown. And Not LT. Had an affair with a crazy lunatic. <laughs> now wants to be Faith and trying to get us to. Yeah, it's weird. Um, these two would team up for a bit until a month later, HBK would come back and then Bam Bam would feel like a third wheel. Yeah. Like, hey, can't you see we're back together? You know? Yeah, we don't need you anymore. Diesel would lose the WWE Championship at Survivor Series against Brett and walk the line of being a heel, but at the same time slapping fans' hands that would wear the black glove. <laughs> In December, he would face Owen Hart as revenge for taking him out of action with the concussion storyline. Remember that? Owen Hart did it. It wasn't the Navy guy in Syracuse. It was Owen Hart. Of course it was. Remember, that's the, yeah. that's the story. That's the story. The way he remembers it, that's the way it went. So if we're all adding up this all together, it wasn't JPL. It was <laughs> Owen Hart who stole his smile. There it, it was, is. It was me. Owen Hart was the higher power of your smile. <clears throat> it was me, Sean. It was me all along. <laughs> that son of a bitch. <laughs> Where's my... Is it in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? Oh, dear. <laughs> um, okay, are we reviewing this the same way? Yeah, and this one, if you give this a nine... I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of one match. Nah, I'm good. Yeah, no, this is... It was their first one, I'll give it a six. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Six. It wasn't... Yeah, it was, it was better than bad. It was before Mabel started um, destroying the rust roster. <laughs> and it was basically Lex was leaving. So, like, it didn't have any, like, competition. Was, yeah, no, there's, I don't think any of it, it really wasn't a lot of story in its own universe. Like, let's give you a match for the Not next important. pay-per-view. Everything that just happened at WrestleMania, you can watch it again. Yeah. But here's this match. Uh, yeah. yeah. Five see. videotapes out of ten. Huh. And I'm just going to... <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to tell everybody about it. Just be like, hey, yeah, Man. pay-per-view happened. Um, hey, did you watch that video? Oh, yeah, I saw it. It was okay. Should yeah. I watch it? Eh, if, I guess, if you want. If you want to watch Brad vs. Kakushi? Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Everything else was just Adam Bomb. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> Um, we're going to play a little game. It's called Guess the Wrestler. We each have 90 seconds to ask questions about the wrestler that other person is thinking about where we can only answer with yes or no. The wrestler can be active, inactive, a legend, alive or dead, or any variant of the wrestler, including a special character he or she might have become. For example, we could be thinking of, I don't know, Mr. Sago. <laughs> uh... Okay. <laughs> or our favorite wrestler, Mabel, as Viscera. Um. <laughs> did he, was he something else? Well, Viscera. Or. Mabel. Yeah, yeah. Mabel. <laughs> Big Daddy V, there it goes. Yeah. God. Okay. Jeez, Louise. Right. Well, do you want me to start this time, or do you want to start? Um, uh, you're gonna guess. Go ahead and guess. Okay. In ten seconds, and go. Okay, man or woman? 
man? Um, most active decade. 80s and 90s. Okay. Uh, heavyweight champion? Yes. Long hair? Yes. My 80s and 90s. Long hair. Um, fan favorite? Well, for the for, During that time, more heel or more face? Face. More face. Um, were they more known as a single wrestler or a tag wrestler? Single. Single wrestler. Um, hmm. Okay. So, 80s, 90s. Hmm. Ultimate Warrior? Seconds. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All that right. was literally... <laughs> okay. Like a live or dead. dead. That takes care of everybody. I should ask that one. <laughs> All right, let me think of somebody. Um, try to go with. Okay. All right. All right. In three, two, one, go. Alive or dead? Alive. Active in the eighties? No. Active in the nineties? Yes. Okay. World champion? Yes. Um, active in WCW? Yes. Sting? No. All right. Um, face paint? Well, they were active in WWE and WCW. Uh, no face paint. No face paint. No. Um, world champion? Yes. Um, was it a faction? Yes. Ric Flair? No. Ugh. In WCW... And um, WWF. WWF. In a faction. Did he have a valet? Uh, no. No. Um. Okay. Did he have a manager? No, he wasn't known for having a manager. He might have had one once or twice, but he wasn't known for having a manager. Did he have a mullet? I they yeah yeah Eddie Eddie Guerrero no uh, uh Ric Flair no oh jeez um uh, he had a mullet mullet ish mullet ish <laughs> Brian Pillman no no he had a mullet he had a mullet um okay, ask two more questions <laughs> let's see was he in a tag team. Mm. No, not a tag team necessarily. He sometimes did tag matches, but not a tag team. Well, okay, no, that's not true. In WCW, yes. Damn. Booker T. No. Okay. Um. Ask one more because your time's up. Been up, but ask one more. Was he a main eventer or mid card? Both, but definitely known for as being a main eventer. Lex Luger. No, I was uh, D- Diesel. These what the hell? <laughs> he kind of had a mullet, mullet ish. Odds. When he was Diesel, he did. He yeah, he did have a mullet, mullet and Diesel. Damn it! <laughs> All right. right. I mean, the Outsiders they were kind of a, they really weren't a tag team per se, right? I mean, they were team but they were more they were they came in as a unit yeah to destroy <laughs> but hey I'm gonna do my thing you're gonna do your thing but together we're gonna tag with each other just in case something happens right I got your back you got my back now let's go um get everybody to join so let's get right <laughs> yeah and he never really had a manager I mean when he, not when he was diesel not when he was Diesel. Um, he was just a bodyguard for Sean. Right. He was more like a manager than having a manager. Right. Uh, Although he did come out with Pamela Anderson once. Um, yes, he did. And left with Jenny Gart. 
Oh, with the not Jenny Garth with the Jenny, the other one, McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah, and Jenny Garth. There was a Jenny Garth in there. In your house. Was she in in your house? Yeah. You mean from nine hundred two one zero? Yeah. Really? Kelly. Oh wow. Uh, the I only Kelly see. I don't love. Yeah. I... Which one was that? Well, I'll look it up. Yeah, the first thing, or was it eleven? WrestleMania eleven? Wow, I don't know. I don't know that she was. I've never. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I've never seen her in, in wrestling. Uh, but when he fought, when he went against Shawn Michaels, that's when Pamela Anderson and Jenny McCarthy Jenny. were there. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, ready to end it? Yep. All right. That's all the time we have for tonight. We will be back next week with more WrestleMania moments discussion. Um, it's your turn. So what are you gonna pick? Ooh, let's. Oh, we, we said I'm gonna. We're gonna go with WrestleMania 2000. WrestleMania 2000. All right. Um. Damn, we're just fast forwarding that along. Um, which was that? That was 1999. 2000 was. 16, what was the main I event? Believe. Uh, wasn't that the one with all four McMahons in a corner? Oh boy. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I believe that was, yeah. I believe that was one with all the all four McMahons in a corner. In each corner. Yes, that was Fatal yeah. Four Way Elimination. Yeah. Well, it was uh, Big Show, Rock, Austin, and Mankind. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was oh definitely. yeah, it was a ladder. So yeah, that should be a good one. Most definitely. Um, if you have another pay per view that you think we should watch and review, just like we just did with In Your House One, or any anything from the Network Vault, like the Hidden Gems, let us know. I will be making an email address for us so you can email us. Uh, we're going to attempt to do that. So if you have something that you'd like to say, let us know in the comments. Follow us on Twitter at all underscore things underscore pod. Follow me on Twitter at Million Dollar Geek. Listen to us on Spotify or Anchor at All Things Wrestling. Check us out on Facebook groups at All Things Wrestling with the same logo. I'm going to put the link in the description below on everything. Check us out on YouTube and smash that subscribe button and follow us on Instagram for more wrestling content. Be patient. I just made the page and it's working out well. Adding people, add us in there. Thank you for supporting our content and giving us a listen. Until next time, I'm Ernie. I'm Michael. See you later. Later.